Good morning, welcome. My name is Dion Lerman. I am an associate certified entomologist and licensed pest control applicator and healthy home specialist. For the last dozen years, I've worked for the Pennsylvania Integrated Pest Management Program at Penn State University here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we help, the short version is we help people to deal with their critter problems. Uh, a lot of the people we work with are low-income residents or people who work with low-income residents. And we do a lot of in-service training for home visitors on exactly this, these kinds of topics. And what we're gonna talk about very briefly today is protecting yourself on home visits, introducing the concepts of integrated pest management. Uh, I need to give some mandatory disclaimers before we get going. Products, vendors, or commercial services mentioned or pictured in the training are for illustrative purposes only and are not meant to be endorsements. Medical concerns must be addressed by a medical professional. Similarly, I am not a lawyer. Do not, please do not take legal action based on this presentation. Consult a lawyer. Uh, if you need to, it's probably because of a tenant landlord dispute. There are free land, tenant rights services available in most places through community legal services or similar organizations. If you just Google community legal services and your location, you should be able to provide, find a provider. Uh, this presentation, although brief, uh, and is based on peer-reviewed literature, and if you see citations, I am happy to provide uh, those papers to you. So, jumping right on into the material. Um, first of all, what's a pest? Pest can be just about anything. It can be a fly, it can be a uh, cockroach, it can be a mouse, it can be a squirrel. Basically, it's any troublesome or destructive organism that can affect public health, destroy food or property, or create a nuisance. So a mouse in the field, who cares? A mouse in your kitchen is definitely not something that you want. Uh, in the upper right, you'll see a rodent chewed wire, which is a fire hazard. And <clears throat> on the bottom right, you'll see the mice nesting uh, in, a, in a loaf of bread, which is a terribly comfortable place. Think of it, breakfast in bed. What do they do to us? Why are we concerned about them? Our primary concern are health concerns. Pests can cause allergies and can trigger asthma, as well as eczema and other allergies, and they are omnipresent. Mice allergens have been found in, a, in major national studies in 83% of all homes and 95% of low-income homes. They've also been found in over 89% of all schools, frequently at very high levels. Cockroaches are also allergenic and in some homes are can be found in as many as 63%, some types of homes, as many as 63% of them containing a cockroaches. Um, although the asthma rate has, in the last couple of years, started to finally inch down a little bit, it's more than double what it was 20 or 30 years ago. Here in Philadelphia, over 30% of our children under the age of 18 have asthma. That's three times the national average. Uh, it is, asthma remains the main cause of lost school days, and because an adult has to stay open home when children are, it is also a main cause of lost work days. There's a strong disparity in asthma. African-American children are hospitalized and die at twice the rate of white children. Latino children at three times the rate of white children. And finally, pests bite us. Um, obviously, we have things like Lyme disease from ticks, West Nile carried by mosquitoes, rabies carried by many mammals, and there still are thousands of rat bites each year although I will say rats do not carry rabies, thank goodness. They do carry other things, including rat bite fever, which although it sounds amusing, can be life-threatening. So what do pests want? All pests are looking for three things, food, water, and a place to hide, preferably a nice warm one where they can raise their kids. What they don't want in most cases is you. Mice couldn't care less about you. Cockroaches, not interested in you. Um, Bed bugs, well, they want to feed on people, but bed bugs are not aggressive. 
they can't fly or jump. So you're pretty unlikely to take home bed bugs from most people's apartment or homes if you're careful. Uh, fleas, on the other hand, of course, if you go into a home that's infested with fleas, yes, you are likely to take fleas out, out with you because fleas will jump on you and sometimes in rather astonishing numbers. So how do you protect yourself when visiting clients' homes? First of all, avoid sitting on couches, beds, any kind of upholstered furniture. Uh, the upholstery is a perfect place for bed bugs and fleas. And if you sit there, uh, as the old saying goes, if you lie down with fleas, you will go home with them. Uh, a couple of points down, it says, if possible, bring your own folding stool. Uh, some agencies are actually providing these. Uh, and we simply explain to people that you are in and out of homes every day, all day long, and you don't want to br bring or take anything from anybody. Similarly, we, we recommend that you wear booties, uh, disposable booties. These again are increasingly acceptable. Even the cable guy wears booties now because they ruin too many carpets coming in from outside. We would also recommend uh, applying an insect repellent containing either DEET or picaridin uh, to your clothing, not to your skin. Uh, application, especially around your ankles. And if you're going to be working with patients in bed, perhaps around your waist and your uh, cu the cuffs of your shirt as well to prevent uh, bed bugs from coming home with you. Would also recommend light colored clothing. And if you are going to be providing care to somebody who's in bed, consider wearing an apron or scrubs as overalls or something like that, uh, that you can simply remove and bag until they can get dried. Shoes, socks, and all your clothes should be uh, processed in a hot dryer with nothing else in there for maybe half an hour. You want the things hot to the touch. Heat kills all bugs at all life stages, including their eggs. This includes bed bugs and fleas and any other bugs. So your dr clothes dryer is now your new best friend. We would also recommend that you have an extra set of clothes in a big Ziploc bag. Uh, in case you feel that you've been in infested, uh, you can simply change your clothes, stuff your possibly contaminated clothes in the Ziploc until you can get to a clothes dryer. And of course, take only necessary items with you into the home. If you have a handbag uh, and you have to take it in, do not set it on the floor, just hang it on your stool or if put it on a hard kitchen table or something like that. Never, ever, ever put personal belongings on upholstered furniture. In terms of making offices unfriendly to bed bugs, uh, one thing is to keep clutter down because clutter gives the bugs plenty of places to hide, makes them hard to find, and uh, hard to treat for. You want to caulk cracks and crevices and paint walls to light color, especially in waiting or intake areas. If you have, for instance, an intake counter, uh, make sure that the side facing out is smooth and free of cracks or crevices where bed bugs or other critters could hide. Use metal or plastic client seating, both in waiting areas and next to your desk or in interview areas. Do not use comfy upholstered furniture that provides more places for bugs to hide. Uh, seating should be inspected at least on a weekly basis, turning upside down and using a flashlight to look for bugs or any sign of them. Another thing you can do is get a small uh, clear plastic um, shoebox from the dollar store and put it on the floor next to your client chair. That way your client's handbag, uh, when they set it down, goes in the box and anything that crawls out of the bag stays in the box. You can also use bed bug barriers, uh, interceptors, under the feet of desks or cubicle walls. I'll show you a picture of them later. But for most offices, I would recommend the product uh, above since I Volcano, again, I can't endorse this, but it's a very good product and I would strongly recommend it. It's about two inches square, 
black, so it's pretty unobtrusive when put under a desk or in the corner of a cubicle. Um, it's called a volcano because it's got slopey sides and a big hole in the top. And bed bugs are programmed to climb as host seeking behavior. So they climb up the top, fall in, and can't get out. And again, inspection on at least weekly basis will reveal any bugs who are around and then they can be treated. Your office might also consider getting a used clothes dryer so that uh, staff clothing can be promptly processed and uh, anxiety allayed. And of course, any concerns about bed bugs should be reported immediately so that inspection and possible treatment can occur. So going back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, what do pests want? All pests want three things. They want food, water, and harborage. Harborage means a place to hide and to nest, ideally warm. These are what are known as conducive conditions for pests. And if you want to control pests, the best way to do it is to prevent them. Take away their food, make sure there's no source of water, and eliminate any nesting uh, areas. They get into buildings <clears throat> primarily uh, through uh, penetrations, such as you see on the out top photograph, places where pipes or other uh, holes have been drilled in the wall and not properly sealed. So you need to do an inspection, looking at the outside of buildings and then on the inside, including corners, floors, closets, especially basements and sometimes attics. Uh, and ensure that you seal all those penetrations, put door sweeps on doors, make sure screens are intact. Identify the pests that you find properly. This is very important. I'll show you a slide in a minute that will illustrate why. You can do this online. You can do this through pest control companies, or you can get a free uh, identification from an entomologist at your local land grant university. You can simply take the insect sample to any county extension office and they will forward it to the land grant university for identification. If you're not sure about this, simply look up online, either land grant university for your state or county extension offices and you will find lists of where you can take these. This is a free service uh, that's available from any land grant university. So where do critters hide? Um, I'm sure you've all seen critters in lots of odd places. Uh, sometimes we don't see the critter themselves, but we see evidence of them, especially their droppings. Sometimes we will find their nests and burrows. On the, on the picture on the top, uh, you see uh, contaminated insulation that was inside the walls of an oven. And since many people no longer use their ovens, they use their stove top, but tend to rely on microwaves. Uh, the ovens become attractive places uh, for the mice. There is insulation in the walls. They will pull it down and nest under the oven or simply nest in the walls of the oven. Any place where there's food and water are good places to look for critters, especially under sinks and kitchens garbage pans and uh, trash areas, uh, especially hidden places inside of walls, behind cabinets, in basements, attics, uh, waste and recycling areas, behind baseboards, inside of warm cavities, uh, especially electronics, including microwaves, TVs, computers, and in serious infestations inside of smoke alarms. And again, uh, you want to look, if you spotted exterior entry holes, try to find uh, other uh, holes on the interior adjacent to where the uh, exterior holes will. So uh, the bottom picture, you see a uh, cockroaches nesting inside of packaging. This is a very common type of packaging these days because of buying clubs and that loosely overwrapped plastic protects the cockroaches who love nesting inside of corrugated cardboard. Those corrugations are exactly the size of a cockroach. They crawl in there, lay their eggs, the babies can even eat the, uh, the glue, and of course it provides a distribution mechanism as well. So cardboard boxes should be eliminated and uh, from storage. Again, 
clear plastic to totes or boxes are preferred. Oh, I was talking about the importance of identification. Here you can see the difference between a winged ant and a termite. At certain times of year, you may have huge flocks of bugs uh, flying about. And many people uh, are worried that they're termites. It is very easy to tell the difference between a harmless winged ant, which will be dead within 48 hours, and a termite, which uh, as part of a swarm can do terrible things to a home. If you look at the illustrations, you'll see ants always have a narrow waist, termites don't. They look tubular. Ants always have angled or elbowed antenna. Termites always have straight antenna. Ants also have uh, wings, two sets of wings that are different sizes, whereas the wing sets on termites are the same size. So simply by looking at closely at the insect, you can determine whether it's an ant or a termite and eliminate all that panic. So if we do have a pest, it's important to get rid of them. As I said, they, they create health effects and can cause physical damage, excuse me, as well as uh, being a nuisance and disgusting. Prevention is much easier than treating, so we'll talk a little bit more about exclusion. Sanitation is absolutely essential in most pests. Uh, our lack of sanitation is what usually provides the critters with their dinner. So it's important to clean, to declutter, to eliminate, which will eliminate potential harborage. And we need to eliminate all sources of food and water. We recommend physical controls uh, to eliminate and control the pests after, and if they've been properly identified and you need to, chemical controls may be appropriate, at, but not as the first step. And even after you've eliminated the problem, we would recommend ongoing monitoring. Oftentimes, uh, pests will be reintroduced and you want to know about it and get rid of them while there's still a minor problem before it becomes a big problem. So the most important thing to know about control is not to use over-the-counter sprays or foggers. They are largely ineffective. Many insects are now uh, resistant to the active ingredients in them. And uh, most, in most insects uh, hide in places where, in fact, the foggers will not reach them. This is especially true of bed bugs. The other thing about over-the-counter sprays or foggers is that they will ruin cockroach bait which is the most effective treatment, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, the sprays and foggers may also trigger asthma attacks. They may have other health effects, uh, especially on children. Foggers are also a risk for explosion. They use hydrocarbons as propellants and can be uh, any, any flame or uh, even a uh, cigarette or a spark from a refrigerator cycling on can cause that hydrocarbon to explode. And you see in the bottom picture there, uh, the house was completely blown apart. Uh, the San Francisco newspaper that published this noted in the caption of the photo that live cockroaches were observed crawling through the debris. So in fact, they don't actually solve your problem. They may kill a few bugs, but it's the food, water, and shelter that have to be eliminated to get rid of your problems. So I mentioned cockroach bait stations and gels. These are extremely effective. You see in the top uh, photograph, there are several different brands, both consumer and professional. Uh, there are many brands available. Combat, which you can buy in any grocery store, probably being the most familiar. All of them are effective, and it really doesn't matter what you use. Most of them have a sticky a thing on the back so that they can be placed on the on the sides of cabinets or appliances, and they tell, include directions showing you where effective placement would be. Um, you want to put these where the roaches are, out of sight. You should not be seeing these. They are not decor. In the middle photograph is a tube of gel. Uh, again, a professional version. There are consumer versions. Combat does make uh, the gel product. This is the same 
product that's inside the bait stations and it should be applied into cracks and crevices, not for surface treatments. Just small amounts about the size of a pea are really all that in any given place. Uh, and depending on the level of infestation, you'll use uh, more or gel. You do want to be careful with the placement of gel. It can uh, melt and, and run, and so you want to avoid high temperature areas. You want to avoid anything near uh, food or uh, utensils. Although one excellent plate use for the gel is in the hinges of kitchen cabinets, which often become infested with cockroaches. Simply putting a dollop of gel into that hinge is extremely effective. When the cockroach bait stations are empty, make sure you throw that puck out. And once you've gotten rid of your roaches, you do not need to continue to use the product. We would recommend continuing to monitor and uh, getting new bait stations as soon as you notice a uh, reinfestation. In the bottom photograph, you'll see there's a combat bait station on the right, but on the left, you'll see there's a hole in the wall and they really need to fix that hole in the wall more than they need to be using a bait station in a uh, bathroom sink, under a bathroom sink. Controlling mice uh, can be difficult. They're very persistent. They breed very quickly. You need to get rid of all food and all water, ensure that garbage cans are covered, including kitchen garbage cans, uh, and you need to ensure that any opening bigger th than a pencil is sealed, especially uh, door sweeps under, on the base of doors and penetration such as you see in that top photograph. They can be stuffed with um, copper mesh or uh, copper wool like a copper pot scrubber, a chora boy, which you can buy at the uh, dollar store for six to eight for a dollar, and cut and pack firmly into those openings so that the mouse cannot pull it out. And then you want to seal over those openings, either with silicone caulk, spackle, or cement. We don't actually recommend spray foam because the mice will chew through it and it's not possible to clean it. However, in some situations, like that big hole under the sink where the pipes come in, it may be your only option. If so, it needs to be inspected on a regular basis at least every six months and replaced as necessary. Large openings on the outside uh, can be covered with sheet metal or screening. And snap traps are the most effective control for mice. There are many styles available. They can be put inside of cardboard boxes uh, if you're concerned about the aesthetics or safety of snap traps. Just cut a hole on either side of the box. For instance, the shoe box, put traps inside, put it against the wall, uh, and mice will run into the box, investigate, and be caught. And then you can dispose of them quickly. We would strongly say, and this is not just me speaking, but also the EPA, HUD, and the National Pest Management Association, not to use rodent poisons in homes. Remember, mice are mammals, and anything that can kill a mammal can cause harm to a person, especially a child. Making sure that the pests don't come back, make sure there is no food or water for them, Make sure that doors and screens are, are kept in good repair. For instance, in the top photograph, you can see a door sweep that is broken. This will not be effective. It needs to be replaced. Door sweeps are inexpensive and very easy to install. And the brush style shown here is much more effective than the rubber, uh, like windshield wiper style. We do recommend the use of monitors, even when you don't think you have a pest problem because a monitor will pick up the problem as quickly as possible and then you can deal with it before it becomes a big problem. On the bottom, you see uh, various kinds of glue boards which are designed for insects. These should be dated and checked at least weekly. For mice uh, and other rodents, snap traps are going to be much more effective than glue boards. Uh, only a, glue boards usually only trap juvenile mice adults learn to avoid them. Again, you can put a snap trap uh, someplace like, for instance, behind your refrigerator on an ongoing basis and check it weekly, changing the bait to keep the bait fresh.
uh, and that will alert you that to a mouse problem before it becomes a major problem. Uh, if you get rid of your pests and don't see anything on your monitors, good job, keep going. Uh, if you check your monitors and find that you're starting to catch things, treat again. If your roach baits did not seem to work, simply try a different brand. The different brands have different bait flavors and different active ingredients and changing brands will overcome both bait resistance and insecticidal resistance. Uh, and the other thing to make sure of is that there's no competing food source, especially grease. Grease is extremely attractive to cockroaches and mice and provides an excellent food source for them. Uh, make sure that all grease is removed from kitchens, including cabinets and walls. Fleas. Uh, if you pick up fleas uh, at a client's home or from your own animals, it's, uh, you need to treat for that. It is important to realize that you should not use aerosol sprays and especially do not bomb. Do not use foggers for fleas. Foggers fill your whole space with poison. You do not have fleas on your ceiling. You don't need to do that. You can use a uh, trigger spray product is shown on the left, which I'll talk about in a moment, to spray the area where your pets are, are or where you have seen the fleas. You're going to need to launder any pet bedding and as much of the area as you can. Uh, fleas are going to be in carpets and, thing, and upholstery, things like that. And the best job you can do cleaning that, the better. It's also important to vacuum. Uh, any place where the fleas have been active. Fleas, uh, this will uh, suck up adult fleas and the vibrations will cause the pupae to uh, it close to hatch out, releasing live fleas. Vacuuming on a, on a daily basis will cause all of these uh, pupae to hatch uh, and in a two or three week period, you will eliminate the problem. For treatment, you want to use a trigger spray product, such as shown on the left, not an aerosol. Aerosols generate very tiny uh, droplets, which remain in the air for a long time and can lodge directly in the lungs, which is not a good thing. This, you, for effective flea treatment, you need a two component spray. One that is an adulticide, uh, with, that is it kills the adult fleas, and you want to choose a non-pyrethroid product. Pyrethroids tend to end in thrin, such as pyrethrin. Uh, this particular product that's shown on the left and many others often contain fipronil, which is the same product as used in top spot, which you may put on your animal already. This is very effective against adults. However, a good product should also include an insect growth regulator, such as methoprene, uh, many of these products will say something like plus. If you see on that product on the left, it says flea plus IGR. You always want to make sure there's an insect growth regulator as well as an adulticide. Again, I do not recommend this particular product. I just wanted to find something so you could see what I'm talking about. If you have animals, uh, I would recommend a flea trap which is very simple. It's just it's got a small light and with a sticky trap. Uh, the green light attracts the fleas and they get stuck to the trap. This is a monitor. It will not control an infestation, but it's very useful if you have animals that go in and out or if you work in fle heavily flea infested areas and you want to make sure that you don't have them at home. Okay, finally, bed bugs. Um, <coughs> As I said, this is a very short introduction to, the, to these issues. My standard in-service training for bed bugs is an hour and a half. So this obviously uh, is going to be a very uh, brief version. Most important thing about bed bugs is don't panic. Panic is always a mistake. It's going to cause you to make mistakes, make bad decisions, and probably spend a lot of money. First of all, you can see bed bugs. Uh, they're not invisible. They are small. A newly hatched bed bug may be as small as a poppy seed. 
off of a from a bagel. An adult bed bug may range in size from a sesame seed to that of an apple seed if they're fully fed and engorged. But you can see them. Bed bugs can be avoided and they can be controlled. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. It's also important to remember that not every bite or skin irritation, even if got the occurring in bed, is necessarily a bed bug. Fleas bite, okay? Mosquitoes bite. Other insects may bite us. Uh, it's very important to get a sample of the bug and have it professionally identified before you panic over bed bugs. The good news about the bugs is that they do not, they have not been shown to spread or cause disease. And you should, the property owner should be notified uh, as quickly as possible so that treatment can be begun. Simple heat and steam are very effective and there are many forms of heat treatment ranging from, as I say, steam to small boxes to whole room or other containers that can be used uh, and uh, professionals can help you make these choices. Again, do not use over-the-counter sprays or foggers. These are largely ineffective against bed bugs, which are resistant to them, and the foggers especially do not reach where the bugs are hiding. This is a handout on how to identify a bed bug from the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Uh, I will make this available to you, and uh, Jenna can uh, forward it to, to you, you. This is an excellent resource. It shows uh, all stages of the bug at, 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 as an egg, as a nymph, and as an adult. Uh, in the top drawing, you see a female bed bug with a rounded butt. In the bottom illustration of an adult, you see a male with a pointy butt. Um, so this allows you to identify bed bugs at all life stages and is an excellent resource. It is available for free download from that URL. They also have many other really excellent bed bug resources on that, but on the new website. Control of bed bugs um, is difficult, but it can be done. Again, we would recommend exclusion, eliminate clutter, use clear plastic bins with snap lids. These are easy to uh, to stack, to move for inspection or for treatment or cleaning, and any bug activity will become evident and individual bins can be treated rather than having to treat all of everybody's stuff. All bedding uh, and should be washed uh, at, or at least dried. Any clothing that has been worn needs to be washed before drying, but but fabric that has not been worn by a human does not need to be washed. It can simply be put in a dryer at high heat, saving a lot of time and money. Mattresses and box springs should be sealed with encasements, special bed bug proof covers that zip over. They need to be properly fitted. We do not recommend throwing out mattresses. We do not recommend using pesticides to treat mattresses. Encase mattresses and box springs instead. Uh, interceptors should be placed under the legs of beds, as you see in the bottom illustration. This is a very simple device. Uh, the one you see there is named Climb Up. It was the first one readily available. There are other brands available now as well. And you simply put them under the legs of the bed. As I mentioned earlier, bed bugs are programmed to climb. It's host-seeking behavior. So they climb up the rough outside wall and then get stuck in the very smooth inside. Similarly, bugs moving down the bed to other harborage uh, locations also get stuck in the interceptors. These have proven to be very effective. You need to make the bed an island, move it an inch or so away from the wall. Remember, bed bugs cannot fly or jump. They can only crawl. So if the bed is not touching the wall and bedding is not touching the floor, the only way up is through the interceptors and that bug will be caught. Look for the bugs and if you see them, contact a professional. Treatment should be done only by licensed pest management professionals. Uh, consider using steam or heat. Most professionals will use some kind of dust, either diatomaceous earth or a silica gel. And treatments should be multifaceted. 
possibly including vacuuming and other techniques as well, uh, and not solely reliant on chemical sprays, which will prove to be ineffective, especially since bed bug eggs are extremely resistant to sprays. Even sprays that might be obviously kill adults will usually not be effective against eggs. Okay, I covered a, well, a whole lot of material there really quickly. Do people have any questions? Anyone? I don't think so at this time. Wow, I left time for questions. I could have covered more. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Um, here are some other resources. Um, most, much of the material in this presentation was pulled from these and other sources. I strongly recommend uh, Dr. Denny Miller and Dr. Chang Lu Wang, who are listed towards the bottom there. These are some of the best researchers in the field. They actually do field trials on many of these techniques and products, and their websites are full of information. Denny Miller has excellent fact sheets, for instance, on protecting yourself in various workplace situations. Uh, Chang Lu has a lot of videos available on his website as well. Uh, the Northeastern IPM Center, which is the host of the Stop Pests and Housing pro pro Program, the host of this uh, webinar, also has a number of resources available, uh, including several archived webinars on issues around bed bugs, uh, pest control, hoarding, and um, um, delusionary parasitosis, which are the people who think they have bugs and don't which is a much more extensive problem than most people realize. Um, and I would encourage you to check out the, the, these videos. They're on the stoppests.org uh, website. Any, anybody come up with questions? Any others? No. I don't think we have any. Okay. Thank you was, for the presentation. Was was it helpful? Did I give you what you were looking for? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, my contact information is visible here. You are free to contact me. Email is the best way to get hold of me. Um, I do respond. It may take me a couple of days. I get a lot of email and I travel and train a lot. And so my box fills up and it can take me a while to empty it, but I will respond. Sounds wonderful. Thank you, Diane. Okay, uh, thank you. And if we have no other um, questions, I guess we'll sign off. Okay, thank you. All right, take care. <laughs>